Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about the requirement traceability matrix and its usage in the project life cycle. We all know uh, in the you know internet uh, we will be getting lot of information on the requirement traceability matrix. In short, it's RTM. And also there are lot of uh, templates available. But my focus today on the on this session is more like into practical experience how best we can leverage this document in the project life cycle and i will also let you know where and all we can use it and uh, how periodically we have to update this how to keep this updated always and all that information i'm trying to explain in this session so let's get started the agenda of this uh, session is um, to explain the usage and also uh, the preparation and also the key points to note right so uh, so let's uh, talk about on that and uh, uh, let's see one by one so RTM usage uh, the, the the fundamental question is the basic question here is uh, why we should use this or why we need this actually right so if you remember in the software development life cycle uh, the recommend start very early in the project right so then it will be uh, moved to the design coding testing and the maintenance it's a you know it's a, the the subject of the stlc right so the requirement itself is starting at the beginning and if you don't have the matrix to capture, then how you go and analyze the overall project? That's the basic question, right? So we always uh, think and, uh, you know, keep our document updated in terms of, you know, the to track, to trace. So there must be one document. So that is called RTM. And also the RTM can be used to use to, uh, uh, to trace the recommend against your test cases so what if, if somebody ask uh, right somebody ask you to uh, show me the coverage test coverage of the recommend in very small uh, projects uh, say for example two three modules or three modules and less integration configuration reports right in that case it's very easy for you to tell I have covered all of them but again, how did you cover? So you have a test case, it's written in the Excel or it's written in some of my uh, test management tool, that's fine. But how you show the coverage or how we show the coverage to clients, right? If somebody asks me, uh, what is the percentage of uh, test coverage on this requirement? If I say, we have all the test cases, right? We have all the test cases stored in the ALM, Bugzilla, whatever the tool or whatever the excel but how that will justify whether i have the coverage or not or how i can present my data to any stakeholders right internal or external how i can present whether i have the coverage or not i need to have a matrix i need to have a matrix in that i can showcase okay say functional module a b c d i have uh, 10, 10, 10 test cases each of the module. So that's the coverage. M maybe the, the the accuracy may vary, but I have a data to present it, right? So that's why if somebody asks you the coverage or somebody uh, question you whether do you have the recommend coverage in your test cases. So we need to present uh, this RTM to them showing the data whether we have the test cases or not right that is the one of the usage and second suppose it's a big project and there are a lot of integration configuration reports uh, involved in this right then the question is uh, whether we can go for automation nowadays the, everybody talks about the automation right so how so this recommend traceability matrix will help us to justify the need of automation or we don't need of automation if you go verbally tell I need automation then a lot of question will be asked why how which module you are going to test with automation scripts and all that so to justify your need 
you should have the automation uh, sorry you should have the uh, rtm in place i will come later why we need it uh, how we can present it i'll i'll go through with the template but i'm just trying to explain here like uh, why we need the auto rtm right it's not just a matrix it's actually it's uh, it can be treated as bible of your project very few of us uh, are going to use the traceability matrix and very limited uh, people are going to maintain the traceability matrix but if you have this single traceability matrix you can run the show you can run complete project you can run complete project in your hand okay so you, you need not to go for the uh, uh, fetching the data here and there you just have the traceability matrix with all updated information even you can do the estimate you and you can take a call on the production fixes uh, the time estimates how many days you need do you have automation scripts in place and things like that okay so the 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 the, the basic idea of rtm it is just not a matrix it's a it's a bible actually if you if you keep updating your recommend traceability matrix in a very standard and uh, you know uh, or with all clear data in terms of the requirement then you can you can do wandering right so the the, the question here is like how best we can leverage this uh, rtm so we all know the definition we all know the advantages right so how best the what what is that the needed like uh, how to prepare the requirement traceable matter so that i can i can i can uh, control my project from the testing perspective or from the release perspective or from the deployment perspective right so so let's talk uh, further on the rtm usage so i'm also mentioning uh, sometimes it's act as a decision making document so you all know by definition you know what is uh, rtm it's a document which maps the maps and trace the recommend diagnostic test cases and you also know what is the advantage it covers 100 percent you can showcase that to anybody like the recommend as the test case and it covers 100 percent test coverage and also it helps you to find out the missing recommend and the missing test cases suppose you have all the requirements in place and when you go through the recommend traceability matrix you can find out easily like say for example there are requirement a b c d and you don't have a test case for c that you can easily trace out using the recommend traceability matrix that is the one advantage on this and also it helps and analyze the estimating part yeah this is very key point uh, the estimating point suppose what happens there is already one project running in the production and uh, you get some production defects or CR uh, production uh, related defects right and obviously it has it has to go for a fix then um, what happens generally what happens generally developer are going to give the fix and the question is how many days need for test so this is the obvious question that the, any test manager or a project manager wants to uh, know or answer to stakeholders how many days you need because this is a production defect and uh, they need uh, they need urgent uh, patch release or whatever it should go production immediately after the fix then if you are in the place of uh, giving the estimate how are you going to give the estimate on what basis on the, the number of defects that you got from the production right you cannot say I, I need two days three days one days or whatever right so you cannot say that you should have the data you should have a, have the data to present to the client or stakeholders right so this particular requirement traceability matrix can help you to estimate how many days you need right so what happens generally say for example module a got the production defect and the developer has given the fix now you have a module a related test cases take a look at the traceability matrix find out how many test cases are there say for example you have module a related 50 test cases are there and of course all of them are going to affect with this fix that's the regression right then also go and check whether you have a automation script in place for this module a if yes how many of them you have scripts say for example 50 test cases you have 40 uh, test case already automated only 10 test cases are manual right because of some reasons right so now you have a data with you 10 manual test cases has to get passed and 40 test cases you already have the automation script to run now the question is 40 test case 
uh, using automation script you can get the result within 30 minutes or whatever within less than one hour now the mand is required for estimate to give 10 test cases uh, uh, right so so i'm just i'm just trying to put the data in front of you so this particular rtm will help you in this situation so for example if you if you go for a production release uh, patch release for the fix then you have to estimate your uh, uh, you know testing effort then just go to your traceability matrix and take out all of the related test cases and see whether you have automation scripts in place or not if not then count the number of test cases into mandates and give the estimate that's the best way and you have a data nobody can deny it right so this is the one of the key uh, uh, key uh, factor of having the RTM in place and up to date. It's not just you have a RTM and nobody visit. No, it should not be like that. You have a RTM, you have a complete recommend traceability against your test cases, against your automation scripts. Okay, so that that's how uh, this RTM can be used to make a decision, right? So let's move on to the next uh, thing. Now, question is how to prepare RTM. So if you go and Google it, right, uh, template, RTM template, you get lot, you get lot many templates. So that's all customized one. My suggestion is, as per your project scope and size, you prepare your own traceability matrix, which has all the required information that you should need it, right? So the considering the fact that how to use and leverage this RTM, where and all we can use, you already know, right? So based on that, you prepare your own recommend traceability matrix and review it, and then see how many columns you need and customize your uh, uh, template based on your recommend. Now what I will do, I will quickly go through my uh, my traceability matrix and I'll give quick analysis how we can leverage this, right? So I have the traceability matrix something like this. The template start uh, with the project description and uh, what types of testing that you are going to do, whether it is a unit integration testing, system integration testing or end to end testing, right? So just prepare one uh, template like this and in the first column you have functional area. This is uh, SEM um, project supply chain management so i have enterprise uh, these are all the module that i am talking about enterprise performance management and then finance then i have human capital management then i have incentive compensation procurement project portfolio management supply chain management so all these are my modules okay so likewise you also list all your modules in the first column then the second column here the document name that means you the for the each module you have a recommend document right that means the use case describing in it right so you just name which document you are referring for example uh, you have a, a atm screen atm is the project right so then you have a user profile you have a withdrawal lot of use cases you have a mini statement bank statement and also there are a lot of concepts like current account, saving account. So I'm just giving the example, right? Like that, you have to specify your project recommend document, right? In the document section. And uh, this is more like a architectural related uh, diagrams. If you have in your project, just place it. Otherwise, just ignore it. Then uh, there must be a location where you can go and fetch your document for related uh, project, right? You give just location of that so that if anybody the product team updates the recommend document you can directly visit the link visit the location by using this link right on your right side uh, so this is the area where you need to be proactively update this document this is the area where this will give you the kind of uh, you know the control over your project the first column i am having the functional the functional means here for me for this SCM project it's all the flow use cases right and in that i have a integration pieces integration pieces like uh, i have a couple of uh, web services uh, and uh, restful services uh, you know restful and soap related uh, uh, services calls i need to uh, I, I will maintain here so how many of them i have a lot many integration calls so i'll keep the track of this and also i'll keep when it is ready and when it's going to be ready okay i already told this particular template i am not going to use just for a uh, test case uh, mapping i am going to use it for overall project control 
so here I'm going to put it uh, when I get this thing right so um, for each activity when is the completion date right so I'll map that and also um, in the project there will be a lot of reports that we need to generate so some of them are BI some of them are internal transaction related reports and all things like that right so whether this particular module the reports are available or not so if not just mark it as any if yes then make it the, then then you update s yes and make the you know necessary details captured here then uh, i have also have extensions uh, extensions for uh, you know the data will flow some system to other systems so in that case i'll capture the extensions yeah you know, for example here few of them i have extension this is the module i have extension okay so this is uh, the module name is finance in finance i have extensions okay so that's why I captured the extensions here. Then test data. This is where the, the crucial part will come into picture. The, the reason why we should keep update the document because we are keep updating the test data also. Okay. Then capture all the necessary test data. It can it could be like user login or uh, you know pre-request kind of thing, and uh, you are expecting something from the client side to proceed with the flow or you know data required to continue whatever whatever right or some data or you are expecting from clients to clients to give right so all that you need to capture here, and the next part is the start date of your uh, testing whether it could be SAT, UAT or whatever, you just mention start and finish. And if you want uh, automation scope is there, you just put automation scope here, right? Then say whether this module, module you have uh, automation in place, yes, I know, things like that, right? Then you also put the release versions so which version this uh, uh, tested for example this is version uh, version dot uh, zero dot one things like that right so so what i'm trying to say is, is this is a more customized one if you need you just capture all that in your requirement traceability matrix and keep update this matrix and this will actually help you to help you to you know uh, help you in the lot many ways uh, and overall project you can control in this sheet okay so 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 uh, th th this is all I have uh, in this session I hope uh, uh, I have covered uh, all the required thing please drop me note uh, if I have to cover something else also thanks for watching